What are the major ways in which compliance has changed since the introduction of the Bribery Act in 2011? So the compliance world, world has moved on very significantly since the advent of the UK Bribery Act in a number of ways. I'll pick out three. Tech is probably the leading way in which compliance has changed in practice. In 2011, whistleblowing lines were not widely used. Conflicts registers were more likely to be done manually and uh, then through an automated system. And third party management systems certainly didn't exist as we know them now. So tech has enabled the processing of significant compliance data in a way that has really changed the way that a compliance officer works. The second point is that the compliance industry, if you like, uh, has grown. Um, whereas in 2010, the number of uh, compliance advisors, specifically in the anti-corruption space in the UK, was tiny. Uh, now we could fill big warehouses full of people who work in this area or mostly uh, in this area. And so the amount of knowledge and discussion and debate about how these systems controls work is at a completely different level to the, the level it was in, in 2010. And thirdly, I'd say there's been a real ratcheting up of standards. Uh, the MOJ guidance is really a starting point for most companies. In practice, they reach much higher standards, partly led through the US, partly less through, led through industry back, best practice and partly led through experience. So the, the, the standards that people are expected to meet now are really a lot higher than they were uh, back in 2010. And uh, uh, at the point we were publishing the, the last version of, uh, of this book in, in 2013. If I think about other ways that, uh, that compliance has changed in that more than 10 years uh, since the bribery acts came in, I'd probably pick out a couple, which I've, I've both dealt with in the book specifically. The first is around investigations. Internal investigations have become much more sophisticated. Uh, Stephen Story, who co-writes a chapter on that topic uh, with me in the new edition of the book, uh, points to the advent of the ACI, uh, a, a group supporting internal investigators as being key, but also a lot more standardization in approach. And again, a much greater use of tech in the collection of data, much of which is now held on mobile devices of one kind or another. The second area uh, I pick out, and again, uh, covered in the new edition of the book, uh, this time with Sue Scott, the former head of anti-corruption at HSBC, is the way that bribery and corruption has become a significant issue within the banking industry. I think up to 2010, 2011, there was a real focus on sanctions and AML. That's where the big sticks were, and that's where the focus of the work was. In the period since 2011, we've seen a huge interest in bribery and corruption standards and compliance from the FCA and other regulators, and that has changed. Banks' approaches to this area and the staffing and the knowledge base. So that, that has made a, 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 a considerable expansion to the way that uh, uh, the, the bribery law and practice is considered in our area. My final thought would be the number of prosecutions. So companies tend to take um, parts of compliance more seriously where there is active enforcement. We have seen active enforcement. We've seen much more enforcement since 2010 than we saw in the pre-Bribery Act period, much of which through DPAs, deferred prosecution agreements. And those DPAs have not targeted one sector. We've seen them work from a variety uh, of angles, as broad as banks to defence companies and pharma companies. There really is no area where there hasn't been enforcement or certainly an investigation. So you see an active enforcement background, partly what's driven, of course, the purchase of tech, the expansion of compliance teams uh, and uh, the, the growth of, of, of internal investigations. Well, those are my thoughts. These and many more uh, are explored in the new edition uh, of the UK anti-corruption handbook.